Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you this fine day? Me? I'm actually feeling somewhat trepidant about this particular demo because I am about to step into a place that I'm not really an expert. But it's in response to many, many requests that I've received to start talking to you a little bit about my WordPress install, about how I've set up my personal website and how I integrate that with my YouTube channel. Um, and so I'm willing to do that because I did go on quite a voyage of discovery. Starting a little over a year ago, I decided to build my own WordPress site. Now, I would had no experience in WordPress. I'd used Drupal as a content publisher, not as a site creator. Uh, and the site was built for me before by somebody else. But when I started on this new venture of growing the Dotto Tech YouTube channel, I decided I better build a WordPress site to support it. And the site has morphed quite a bit into the site that you see now. Uh, as I look at it, I realize it's a bit of a hodgepodge. It is definitely a homemade website, but it does serve my purposes at this particular point until I have money at least to invest in having somebody that really knows what they're doing put something better together. So I will agree, if you will agree, to the following contract between you and I. I will tell you how I've set things up. With the caveat being, if you follow exactly what I do, there's no guarantee it's going to work for you because I am not an expert. But I have made it work this way. I'll show you the tools that I use, the reasons that I use those tools, and then you can take that for what it's worth. Does it sound fair? In that case, let's take a look at my WordPress install today on Dotto Tech. All right, my WordPress install. Um, this is what my WordPress site looks like, dottotech.com, if you have a look at it. Now, my goal for my site was for it to be a blog site. When I started producing my content on YouTube, what I was looking for was I was looking for a video blog. I was looking to create videos that would replace what other people do by written blogs. And I would do that with radio shows, with podcasts, and with these sorts of videos. I like audio and video content. I'm better at creating that. So I wanted a site that would support that. So I went around looking for a theme. Now when you buy WordPress or when you install WordPress, if you're doing a full WordPress install on a server, I'm not hosting this on WordPress's site. I have got my own servers that I'm hosting it on. When you start looking for different themes, you will be overwhelmed by the number of choices you have in kind of starter kits. Themes are like starter kits where they've laid things out and they look beautiful, but they never have to support any real content. So we, we do is we take their theme and then we convert it. We look for the features that are in another theme and then we convert it into our own theme. And I, if I'd started right at the beginning, if I was to start over again, I might not take the exact same path that I'm on, uh, but then again, I might. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good thing I don't have to. But I finally chose to purchase my theme package from Themify. Reasons? Well, they're a good Canadian company based in Toronto. They do Shopify, which is an awesome shopping site, shopping center, uh, a shopping tool. And I was thinking, not sure the direction that my content was going to be going. If someday I might actually have a need for a shopping cart where I'm actually selling stuff. I don't know. So I wanted to kind of tie, it seemed to me a good idea to tie in with these folks. And they've got some really nice themes. The other thing that they've got is they've got a very nice WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. They've got a very nice editor that allowed me to feel a lot more in control as I assembled all of the different pages and post structures for my site. So I felt comfortable with the tool. It was an easy tool to learn to use. There are probably a several dozen really good theme sites out there. If you choose Themify, great. It, I, I'm, their, their technical support has been very good. Their themes are beautiful and they've been nice and stable. I haven't had any issues, technically speaking, with Themify. And I, because I bought it, I am an automatic, what's called an affiliate, which means that if you actually buy and choose to use Themify yourself, I'll get a little bit of money if you click on the link that's in my, that's in the, uh, it's in the description field below. Uh, so uh, there you go. Full disclaimer. I, I'm, I'm, I'm selling Themify now to you. <laughs> and I'm not really, because I don't think I make enough money to make a difference in my life, but it would be nice. All right. So as with all of the different theme companies, you take a look at all of their themes. And when I went through and decided what theme I was going to get for my site, I wanted one particular feature it had to be. It had to be this one here, responsive. Because I know that the world is moving to mobile. Responsive themes, theoretically at least, uh, will resolve themselves properly to mobile devices. So when I started looking at the themes that were available, that they had available, 
I wanted to look for one that was responsive that I could use that would properly format my site for both mobile and for desktop or tablet uh, playback. And I going through all of their themes, you know what theme I chose is this one here, Bizco, really their most basic theme. And this is what Bizco looks like when they tell you, this is, let me, let's just run the demo because you'll see that the result that I created has very little to do with looking like their site. There it is. That's what the Bizco promo looks like. And if you go into layouts, you go into, well, I guess it's not that different when you, once you start looking at it in some of the different layout forms. So that this is what their site looks like. And actually, I kind of like that. I might change mine, tighten mine up a little bit. At any rate, that was what I began with. So what happens is you purchase the theme and then you start your WordPress install and you typically will get uh, you know, a technical support person to help you with those first steps. And then you install it and you've got a blank theme to set things against. So this is, let's go into my dashboard. This is the net result that I have. So this is my dashboard with the Bizco Themify theme installed. So that allowed me to create the basic page structure that we've got. And let me just show you my page. I'll just show you my pages. I'll just show you my home page and what it looks like because it it, for, it looks nothing like you might think it should look as you're editing it because some these things you know the we're dealing in an HTML editor we're dealing in a website editor and website creation package so it'd be nice if everything looked like it does on the page and there are packages that will do that but even this package doesn't really do that for us too much it, it will to a certain extent but here is my home page. And the tool that I use, or, or using Themify, we click on this Themify Builder tab, and this beneath it is the actual layout. This is the structure of my website. Now, how Themify works, the reason that I liked it is they have this drag and drop interface where I choose the asset that I want to put on any one of my web pages or blog posts, and then I can just drag it down into these fields here where I can then configure them to display in the field. And any website is really just a database. Uh, the, the content within the web, website is a database. So you, by properly tagging information as you bring it in, by properly tagging your blog posts and all of your different features within the website, you then have the ability to be able to create some external structure to your internal data. Does, does that make sense? I hope it does. But let's just take a look at what I've got. So the very top thing I've got is an ad, which I won't bother showing you. Then I've got a little divider. And then I put a slider. Now they've got a system-wide slider that they've got that runs across the whole top of the page. Did you see that in the landing page when I showed it? I had that for a while, but it took up so much real estate in my site that I didn't think I, I figured when people come to my site, they aren't gonna be really attracted by the graphic brilliance of it. So having a big, beautiful slider at the top, not as important as getting them to the content that they might be looking for. Content like how to take my webinars, how to view the latest show or how to watch my videos. So I modified the slider just to contain basically promotions. I made it much smaller, fit it in more, and then I set it up so that it would just display mainly my webinars, the webinar replays and the free content that I have at the very top of the page. But you see how easy this is? You just go in here and you choose the type of content that's gonna be in each one of these fields, and then you basically import it. Now you use the media manager to import the graphics, and then you create basic links through to different pages doing this. But that is how I set up, when we take a look back at the site, that's how I set up this structure. And what we were just looking at there is this slider here as this goes across. So I'm not going to get into too much detail here. I'll hear from you in the comments area or by email if you want me to actually get in and showing you some details on how I use this software. I'll be, I'll be guided by my audience as far as how deep the demos go. But su suffice to say for now that I use Themify to build the basic structure of my website. I also knew that I was gonna be selling some courses and doing some other promotional things. And so I wanted a tool that would help me uh, do the internet marketing side of it because I don't know how to create what they call squeeze pages, sales pages, how to create a structure in order to get people to purchase or to get people to enroll in different services that we have. And I don't sell a lot of stuff online, but I do sell occasional courses. I'm in the middle of a course right now that I sold. So this was the page that I created to sell that course. Now this is what's called in the business, in the biz, a squeeze page. I think it's called a squeeze page. Oh, well, you could also call it a landing page, I guess, but it's more a squeeze page. So this basically walks you through the process, walks you through all of the features and benefits 
of my latest awesome course that you could buy at this particular time when I first delivered it for $97 with the add to cart. And oh my gosh, I'm creating excitement and intensity and, and how you can get to the end of that page and not have purchased from me, I have no idea. Surprising the number of you that were able to do that, however. Nevertheless, I... I don't have the graphic skills to create this page on my own. I need suggestions all the way along the way. And I was smitten in uh, about last summer by a product called Optimize Press. Optimize Press. It sounds like Optimi Optimus Prime, doesn't it? So this is, uh, folks out of England make this site. And it is basically, it will actually allow you to create an entire website if you want. So you can install this as a full theme or you can also install it as what's called a plugin in WordPress. And let me let me back up the bus a bit. So Themeify is the theme that I've got installed in my site. If I'd chosen to, I could have made Optimize Press the theme, and I could have built the whole site in Optimize Press. And then when I when I was kind of hedging my bet very, back at the very beginning of this video, that was the consideration that I was going through in my thought process: is I might just use Optimize Press if I was starting from the beginning again. But since I'm not it's a moot point, isn't it? But it's something that you might consider taking a look at it. But what Optimize Press does is it really is designed to help you create a sales type environment and a sales type page. So let me go back into, actually, let's go into this page here and let me show you the difference between editing a page that's done in this sort of a tool and the one that was done in Themify. Now, Themify will give you a WYSIWYG editor, even more so than what I showed you. But for me, it works best in that kind of structured environment. This tool has this full-on live editor. And now, I will give you this caveat. This tool works 95% of the time, but occasionally things break in this tool. And that, that, that does end up being a little bit frustrating where it doesn't quite resolve the way you think it should. But we go through basically creating a page using a tool like this by bringing different modules in. And they've got this ability to add what they call elements. So let's say I wanted another element right within here. I just click Add Elements. And what these are are little macros, sort of, that will allow us to plug different types of features into this uh, into this um, page. Everything from beautiful little video players to uh, to to to, to uh, tools to to purchase. You can actually create the links or to opt in pages so people can opt in for your newsletters. All sorts of things are attached here, and the tool has also a fairly robust. API uh, extension library. Oh boy, Steve, now you're talking. APIs are when this application will talk to another application directly without us. So for example, I have an Aweber email uh, autoresponder account. I can set up from within this tool. Actually, I'll show you. Let's say I'm going to set up an, an autoresponder page. So I got, I want to go in here. I want to go into a, a membership. I think it's called membership. Oh, I know what it's called. It's called opt-in form. Opt-in. There, opt-in box. I. I was stuck on the membership name, opt-in box. So if I was going to put a, if this was not a sales page, but a page where I was going to say, please sign up for my newsletter, let me show you how the API integration works because this is a big deal as you set things up. So you choose what it's going to look like. So that maybe that's going to be the look of the opt-in box that you want. And then you can put in, uh, then you choose the integration type. This is where the integration occurs with an outside service. So I'm going to choose that I want this to integrate with my Aweber account. So now it's actually talking because I set up in the back end an API integration. I can actually click here and I can choose which mail list you're going to be subscribed to if you sign up for this on this list. So let's say it's for the Mastercaster list. I can put in a different headline for it, something interesting. And I can even add a bunch of text. They've got the nice Greek text here. Uh, so you can do all those sorts of things. And then you can choose what your submit button is going to look like, which is get instant access. I'll change that to sign up now. Sign up. No. That's not no. That's no. And I'll go insert. Now watch what happens. Boom. In. See that? Isn't that beautiful? Sign up. No. Something interesting. And first name, last name. Now, if you, if I save this page now, that's, uh, uh, that box will be built into this page. So if, if, as soon as you visit this page, you'll be able to see this opt-in form. And if you subscribe, it will actually then communicate directly with my Aweber account and start the process of enrolling you in my autoresponder. So do you see how these tools make it so much easier for us to create rich looking pages to create interaction with our audience? So this is Optimize 
press that does this. Now, this does it for full pages. I'm just going to close this down because I don't want sign up. No, in my thing. Uh, it's asked me to confirm. I'm going to cancel it. Oh, I have to say, okay. There it is, and that will move away from it. There we go. All right. So it turns out, though, a very cool feature within this is that that optimized press interface will also allow me to create, uh, to, to use the editor just in things like posts. So watch this. So when I create a brand new post, when I do my video post, I take a little bit of a shortcut. What I want is I want, let me go to my YouTube channel here just quickly so that you can see. So if, typically speaking, I'm signed into YouTube, which account am I signed in on? Let's go to my proper Dottotech account. Talk amongst yourselves. There we go. And I'll go to my Creator Studio. You get to see everybody who I'm subscribed to. Okay, let's say that I wanted to include this video here using Google Drive for presentations. I just copy that link. Then I go back into my post editor and I just choose add element. And looky, 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 the exact same elements that were available when I was working on the page are available to me here. So I type in here, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for video player. And so I type in, vi there's video player. And this is what I love. This is so fast to create a nice little embed. I choose the style of video player, which is the basic one. I choose that I want it to be a YouTube video. I put in the URL of the YouTube video. And then I say insert. And you can't see it there, but that little embed code will create a video that looks like this right here that's playable back in the window. Steve Dotto here. here How is. the heck? Brilliant. Isn't that brilliant? So Optimize Press is the, I, using, I use it as a plugin to create those landing pages and those squeeze pages where I'm going to sell something and the odd time that I sell something or that I want you to subscribe to one of my newsletters or something like that. But mainly I use it to help me fast track the creation of these video posts because that's mainly what I do. Now, is there a better way to do this? If you are watching this and you're a WordPress press aficionado, might you have lots of better suggestions for me? Absolutely true, you will, because I'm not sure that I do all that great a job on it, but I do a job that works for me. And you've been asking, so now I'm sharing. So I'm gonna encourage you to please comment down below. Tell me if you want to see more uh, details about how WordPress works. And if you want me to include some WordPress type tutorials in the regular mix. This one is a bit of an anomaly. This one will be a one-off unless I hear back from you that you guys want to learn more about how we do this kind of content publishing and if, if this is interesting to you. And if you've got some suggestions for me, better ways to do it, please share it with me, but be polite. I mean, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, and with that, that is it for this week's, uh, or, or for this episode. Um, I, reminder, there's three ways that you can stay in touch with me. If you, if you click on any of the links uh, just over my shoulder right now, you can subscribe to this channel, which I encourage you to do. If you click on the newsletter subscription, you'll be brought to one of those pages that I created in Optimize Press, and you will be able to opt in for our newsletter. That way you'll get uh, updates of all of our videos, plus notice of any of our upcoming webinars or special events. And finally... Dottotech is a community-funded website through the site Patreon. If you want to know about what community funding and uh, what a crowdfunded site looks like or a crowdfunded uh, content looks like or what the whole story is behind that, please visit our Patreon page. I explain it all to you there. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can assure, ensure that Dottotech continues to arrive in a, on an almost daily basis into your YouTube channel. And with that, I hope that you found today useful. Links to all of the products that I talked about are below in the in the description field. And both of them, I think I get an affiliate fee on if you buy it. So please buy, buy, buy. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.